Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, another overview of the Bible Studies for Life lesson. We are in the midst of this new unit called Being an Authentic Church or Being a Biblical New Testament Church, looking at some of the characteristics of what it means to be that kind of church. Today, or this Sunday, we're going to be looking at sharing Christ and the fact that a New Testament church, an authentic church, is engaged in letting people know about Jesus. But as we're going to see in this text, it would be easy for us just to say, oh yeah, we should tell people about Jesus, and that is certainly the case. But there's more to it, and it goes deeper here. When we look at these verses, we're going to get into not just the fact that we need to be telling people about Jesus, but these texts are going to help us understand how we need to perceive and look at other people, especially people who are different from us. So, here's a question, a good question to start off your class with. How should our calling to disciple the nations, which is what we're going to see in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, how should our calling to disciple the nations impact how we see other nations, other races, other religions, other political perspectives? How should our calling to disciple the nations impact how we look at, at people, especially people who are different from us or who disagree with us? Okay, so this is a very important topic and we're gonna, we're gonna come back to answer that question, okay? To get more specific, you might in your class say, how should our calling to disciple the nations impact how we perceive the Russians? How should it impact how we perceive Mexicans? How should it impact how we perceive Muslims? What about Biden supporters? What about Trump supporters? How does our calling to disciple the nations impact how we perceive even groups like that, people with whom we may perceive that we have fundamental differences. So we live in a world that is characterized by an us versus them mentality. We are increasingly living in, as you know, a polarized society, especially here in the United States. We are very polarized. And so this lesson becomes very, very important for the church to understand that we have a calling to disciple the nations, and that means we have a calling to disciple people who are different from us. And so we need to be careful about adopting an us versus them mentality. And by the way, Jesus and Paul, who we're going to be looking at today, Jesus and Paul also lived in a world characterized by us versus them. For them, it was to a large degree the Jews, ver we the Jews, versus them, the Gentiles, or them, the Romans, okay? But they had the same polarization, and they help us understand how we are to think about people who are different from us. So let's jump into the text. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. I know you're familiar with this text, so we're going to kind of hit it fast, but there are some things I want to point out. So... This is at the, right before his ascension, Jesus came near and said to his disciples, keep in mind, at this point, he's speaking to largely a Jewish audience, his Jewish followers, and Matthew, who is recording this and writing this, is writing it for a predominantly Jewish audience. So when Jesus is talking now, he's talking to Jews primarily, okay, but Jewish followers or people who are contemplate, contemplating following Jesus. So he, call, he calls them together and says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We could camp out there. For now, I'm going to kind of skip over that, but it's very rich. Points to the sovereignty, the lordship of Jesus. By the way, the lordship of Jesus in heaven and on earth, meaning all of earth. Jesus isn't just lord over my little world, my group of friends, my church, my nation, Jesus is Lord over all the earth. Go therefore, he says, because of that, because I am Lord over all, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, all nations. Now, when Jesus says that, his followers, 
his Jewish followers would have understood and they would have heard echoes of an Old Testament passage. So if you go all the way, we won't take time to look there now, but you ought to look it up. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, when God called Abraham, the father of Israel, the father of the Jewish people, when God called Abraham to leave his homeland, go to the, the promised land, he said, I intend to use you, Abraham, and use you to be a blessing to all the nations, to all the people. And Jesus followers would have heard that language. They would have understood that Jesus is reaching way back into the Old Testament, all the way back to Genesis chapter 12, and he's pulling the calling of Abraham, and he's pulling it forward, and now he's going to redefine it and apply it to his followers. And they would have understood this. So when he says all nations, they would have known, they would have heard God calling Abraham, and they would have understood that Jesus is pulling that forward. How is Jesus redefining Abraham's call and, and applying it to us? How do we apply Abraham's call? How do we become a blessing to all people? Well, we begin by making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In other words, <clears throat> our calling now, we're adopting Abraham's call, and the way we, we fulfill Abraham's call that is being applied to us now is in a very distinctly Christian way that revolves around Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, So this New Testament calling that we have now is a distinctly Christian calling. And then he goes on, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. Again, it's all about coming back to Jesus and his teaching. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So again, Jesus is taking the Old Testament calling of Abraham, pulling it forward, redefining it for his followers, and saying, now I'm applying Abraham's call to you. You now, as the church of the New Testament, you now have share in Abraham's calling. Okay? Let's bounce over now to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19. Now we're going from what Jesus was saying, as recorded by Matthew, we're going to what Paul is saying to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians. So different voice, different speaker here. So Paul says, from now on, from now on then, we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Well, what does that mean? The idea is that the world looks at people based on certain things. The world looks at people based on race, economic stature, religion, national citizenship, political views. The world looks at people in all these ways. And frankly, folks, so do we, even in the church today. We look at people and we immediately size them up based on their, the color of their skin, based on the clothes they're wearing. And Paul is saying that we no longer are to perceive people or look at people from a worldly perspective. And then he says, even if we have known Christ at one time from a worldly perspective, he's reaching back and saying, you know what? The apostles and people walked with Jesus. They knew Jesus. They talked to Jesus. He dressed a certain way. He had, he spoke in a certain language. He wore his hair a certain way. He was a Jew. We looked at him that way. But now Paul is saying, we no longer look at Jesus that way. Jesus has ascended. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is sovereign over all the nations. So now we look at Jesus not according to a worldly perspective, not as a Jew, not as a friend perhaps as a disciple, but we look at Jesus as Lord because we're looking at him differently now that he has ascended. Therefore, verse 17, familiar text, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. The old has passed away. And the idea here is that the way of looking at, the way we used to look at each other based on race, skin color, nationality, language, economic stature, all those things, all of that has passed away if you are in Christ. Now he's saying more than that. He's talking about 
all he's also talking about the fact that we are being we are transformed spiritually once we become into Christ but as a result of that transformation now we no longer perceive one another and we should no longer perceive one another based on these worldly perspectives those are the old things they have passed away see the new has come we now look at each other differently everything is from God now okay we're not looking at how you were born how you what language you learned from your parents now we're looking at people as though they are from God and he has reconciled us unto himself through Christ now he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation so just as God looked at us and didn't see our skin color he didn't see our economic status he didn't see those things but he loved us and saved us and redeemed us and transformed us so now he's given to us the same ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself all people not just people like me not counting their trespasses against them and he has committed the message of reconciliation to us so just as God was bringing people to him now he calls us to bring people to him but this means we have to stop looking at people according to the worldly perspective we have to stop looking at people according to those things that define us from a world's perspective the race and nationality those things so we're supposed to look at them differently let's go to chapter 5 verses 20 and 21 keep in mind that these two passages are just flow together you could read them all as one if you want but they're they're linked together therefore in light of what I've just been saying because God has reconciled us to himself he's pulled us into a new way of thinking he's transformed us we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us okay now we are his ambassadors what God was doing before now he is doing through us we plead on Christ's behalf to who to everyone to the nations, to everybody you mean to those who look like me no to those who talk like me no to those who have the same economic status as me no we plead on Christ's behalf to everybody be reconciled to God to God come into the family come into what God is doing come into the church come into Christ no matter who you are good news you can be reconciled to God it doesn't matter who you are and those of us carrying the message have to perceive that we love them we care for them regardless of how different they are from us or how much we might disagree with them about certain things he made the one this is verse 21 he made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us now he's reaching back and talking about how Jesus redeemed us on the cross how he paid for that and as a result of what Jesus did on the cross we have been brought in it's not that God just said hey come on in no something had to happen Jesus had to die and as we come to Christ his blood and his sacrifice is then applied to us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God we might come in but it assumes that Jesus has purchased for us has achieved for us this righteousness this sacrifice that now brings us into the family but what's important for us to understand is that same reconciliation that we've experienced now is being extended to those who would welcome who would want to join us and join being reconciled with God we want them to come in and God welcomes them based on the sacrifice of Jesus it simply doesn't matter what they look like what kind of clothes they wear none of these things matter to God and they shouldn't matter to us so in the new creation in the new testament in the new way of doing things in the process of sharing Christ we have to eliminate the us versus them mentality we have to do away with these worldly distinctions and when we don't we are standing against what God has called us to do okay so how should our calling to disciple the nations impact how we see other nations and other races it should it should eliminate those distinctions we shouldn't care if a person looks like us or talks like us or agrees with us about certain things 
as long as they're willing to come into the family through the sacrifice of Jesus. Thanks for listening.